Hey listeners, welcome back to Right Away with Nat and PJ, a podcast for readers and writers across genres and categories. If that sounds like you, tune in every 1st and 15th of the month for interviews with publishing professionals, craft chats, and more. To get news, updates, and bonus content, subscribe to our newsletter at rightawaypod.com or connect with us on Twitter at rightawaypod. Now let's get on with the show. Hey listeners, welcome back to Right Away, and it is our gift episode. episode. Oh, Woo-hoo. Everybody wants cool. presents, everybody likes to give presents. We're so excited for this episode. Um, we have with us Wendy Lynn Harris and Susan Pullman, um, some of our good friends that we went to that retreat with in September. Um, so they've got a lot of great stuff to tell us about, both Um, physical items and other items that writers might want to receive this holiday season. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and just jump into it because like PJ said, everybody wants presents. Let's do it. Well, ladies, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Right Away. Of course, Wendy, you've been here before, but Susan, it's your first time. We'll have you both introduce yourself to start. Okay, Wendy, I'll go, go ahead. first. Wendy Harris, um, longtime listener, three time joiner. <laughs> <laughs> so I am a writer and editor here in Phoenix, Arizona. Wendy's and book. This is my book um, for Writer's Digest um, called um, Writing and Selling Short Stories and Personal Essays the essential guide to getting your work published. And I specialize in helping writers who are writing essays, short stories, poems find their way to publication. And there's a really specific etiquette, you know, based way to uh, submit your own work. Um, you know, our book projects are different. So I, my editing is specifically in that arena too, where it is the short creative pieces. Um, and then I help people figure out maybe where they should go with them and how to take them to the market. Um, and then in my own writing, I work on short stories. I work on essays. I write some flash and I'm writing a novel. So lots going on over here. And this is my is little assistant. This is Paragraph. He insisted on being right here. He'll turn around after a while. <laughs> Does he match you? Does his collar match your shirt right now? Or is that not just this the camera? It's pretty yeah. close. I mean, it he looks, looks like it. It, <laughs> it complements it. Complimentary. Yes. Perfect. Yes. yes. And for people that are only listening and can't see, um, Wendy has her small, brown, cute dog paragraph uh, on her lap. Yeah. And she says that they're not matching and that it wasn't on purpose, but we don't believe her. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Okay. My name is Susan Pullman. I am the author of two travel memoirs, Halfway to Each Other and A Time to Seek. Um, I, I do a lot of things, to be honest with you, everything in and around writing, I love. So I am an editor. I'm a book coach, a a writer as well. Well, I also do essays and other, um, flash and whatnot. And I do a lot of teaching. I love teaching. I started my career as a teacher. And so I teach a lot of writing workshops, um, locally and around the country. Also, I've Wendy and I have both taught internationally and uh, also host writing retreats. So I do a little. So just finished. I'm going to plug our newest movie, um, The Road to Galena, which has being screened now. And um, we just finished filming that. So. So anyway, I love writing. I love storytelling. I'm happy to be here. It's such a thrill to be with you guys. Thank you for inviting me on your show. Oh my gosh, we're so excited to have you both. Um, We definitely wanted to get you on before the end of the year. And then we happened to have an opening and it was just kismet. So we're so glad you're here, especially for this fun episode too. This is one of my favorites. So should we hop in to some of the questions here? This gift, this gift episode. Yes, yes, Yes. gift episode. Gift episode, I love it. Yes. Okay. So let's talk first about writer gifts because, you know, you have the writers in your life probably, but you also have the non-writers and the readers and the non-readers. So we're specifically talking about writers in this section. What are some of your favorite writerly gifts that are tangible goods and not inspiration? (laughs) 
We have quite a few here. And actually, last night I ran around my office and just gathered up things that I have been given over the years and share. They're my favorites. Um, and Wendy as well has some for hers. So we, we'd we like to just share a few. I've, I've written up a yeah. whole list. I guess I probably uh, should so get my exciting. credit card out too. I know this yes. is how to get credit card out. There's so <laughs> many things. Okay, so first of all, let's think about um, writers love paper. Yes. Okay. We oh, love God. all things paper. And um, so just a few items here. Um, you know, really cute sticky notes are always a hit. And, and also... For people that don't know, you know, we now put sticky notes on our monitors, okay? So as story ideas come to us. So it's not just for books anymore. Um, every writer has about a zillion journals. Um, I picked out two. A friend of mine actually made me a homemade gorgeous Oh, that is so journal. cool. And it's so beautiful that I don't even want to write in it. I was going to say, do, are you not using it? There aren't I, any I, words I, I in it. Oh I can't gosh. bring myself to write in it because it is a work of art. And she put so much of her heart into it. But this sits on my shelf and greets me every morning. I feel like if people um, are listening to this episode, go over to YouTube and watch the episode so you can see all this stuff. I mean, you're going to get just as you're going to get a lot listening, but it's going to be way more fun to watch. Yeah. So this is fantastic. Um, other journals, I probably have around 20 journals. I have a whole bookshelf because I'm gifted them all the time. But honestly, I and can't. you really have up. too many. You can't, right? You can't. Every time yeah. you start a new book idea, you pull out a new journal. Or every time you go to a workshop, it has its own journal. Mm -hmm. um, tons of note cards. This is a really cute bibliophile uh, note card set. And the thing with this author or the, the um, creator, you can also see all of these have certain books on here. You can get prints and you can send to her your favorite books or you know the, whoever you're giving a gift to, their favorite books, and she will produce one especially for them and they can hang oh, it on the wall. Wow. Really, really cool. Yes. That is and so cool. So I know. Who is it? Um, okay, let me, uh, can you read that? Because I don't have my glasses. It's a Jane Mount. J A N E M O U N T. Yes. Yeah, so check her out. This is really fun. I'm um, recognizing okay, some of these about, things from Barnes and Noble. Is that where do yeah, you haunt yes. there as well? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can get both of those in Barnes and yep. Noble. All right. <laughs> so um, I love stationery. Okay. And so to have personalized stationery is always very elegant, and you are able to present yourself very professionally if you have your own, and that's easy to find online. Um, what else do we have? Okay, we love to decorate our desks. That's really fun because you need to be, you know, inspired. Okay, so this was a cute tray that one of my clients sent me. It just says oh, right, so but I get to put all my pens and pencils and things on that. Very so nice. very cute. Mm -hmm. um, it's also a good reminder. It says what, right on it. Let me so. talk about this one. This is a very special candle. We were kind of, you know, Susan and I were talking about the ceremony of writing ritual, you know, because we, we, you know, each only have so much time. I mean, all of us as writers, we've got to get into our moment. We've got to relax into it. And one of the great ways to do that is to light a candle and have some sort of like ceremony that begins. But this particular candle mm -hmm. um, is one that I got in uh, San Miguel, Mexico, and it's a it special a place. It was animal. hilarious. We were both teaching at the San Miguel Literary Festival that was happening down there. And um, Susan said, we have to get these candles. We have to get these specific candles from this one small <laughs> artistic yeah. town in Mexico. And I said, all right. And they're really the best candles I've ever had. They're pure um, beeswax. And the thing is, is when you sit down to write, like I have about 10 of these and I hide them from my, <laughs> husband, from my kids because... They are sacred candles, right? And when you sit down to write and you light it, you know that you're entering sacred space. So that is a beautiful thing. So I love that. Can you get those online, or do you have to? Do you have to go to Mexico? Well, I mean, are we going to have to go down to Mexico? Come down to the San Miguel Literary Festival is it a pretty amazing thing yeah, that happens really once a year. Writers come from all over the world, uh, but mostly from Canada, from the U.S. and and from Mexico, and it's a really cool literary event they're coming but back they're, in 2023 right because they're not back yet 
I don't that. think they're they're in person yet. No, yeah. they're all online right now. Okay. Yeah. But you know, in regard to candles, as we know, they're all over the place. But I would caution you not if you're going to buy a writer a candle, I would suggest unscented. All right. I know we're getting picky now, we're getting into the weeds. However, <laughs> it's too strong. It just makes you sick, right? And you yeah. just ugh. And yeah, and you're sick bring memory. You know, oh. so I think, you know, if it was flowers, it's going to be something that might lead us, you know, in one direction or the other. Mm-hmm. Okay. Other just fun little tchotchke gifts. Like, for example, my daughter got me this old fashioned library card. I love mm. to see that in a frame. It just sits there on my desk. It's just cute. Um, there's all sorts of things. I also have that in a scarf. I love this. Oh, so it's oh wow. wow. You know, I have all sorts of literary scarves. I'll get into clothing later. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, okay, mugs. I know it sounds boring. It is not boring. This is the reason. You need to find inspiration somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. And so depending on the day, I will choose a mug that will provide me some mm-hmm. excitement or some some memory or some nostalgia so obviously this is the movie poster um i have one that says i write what's your superpower um i got one for humor writing because i um i teach at the irma bombeck conference uh every other year and this is an irma bombeck mug okay she um, brought this one and you two might recognize it. This is oh uh, yeah, General Store, Forksville mm-hmm. General Store. And um, this one, it was hilarious. I wanted to drink out of this. Susan and I had a great experience um, at the retreat while we were trying to find, oh, we just thought we'd pop over and grab some food from somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> it was, like this place was not open and neither was anybody else. But it reminds me of the whole um, yeah, it reminds, takes aura right of the retreat to there, you know, it takes, right takes back. you back. So, so think about things that are special to the writers in your lives. Like what are some places that mean something? Maybe it's a hometown, maybe it's a certain saying, you know, things that they get, they have a whole array <clears throat> that they can choose from. All right. Do you want to? Yeah, I've got, about? here's something for your, the writers in your life that I started reading yes. about a year ago. It's called Rocket Book. And I am so impressed with this. This is an erasable notebook. It's very thin. So it fits in your luggage and all of your tote bags it comes in a couple different sizes, but I like this giant size because, um, I, I also, you know, I used to have kind of an addiction to legal pads I go through a lot of paper, a lot of paper, and this was my replacement. Um, it's the same size, but it's a completely erasable experience. You have about 10 pages here, and each one of them is blank. Um, you can have colored markers. You can also have regular ink, and it will all wipe off with a, um, just a, what, what did I call it? Like a, you know, soft cloth, you know, something yeah. that you use on your eyeglasses. And then they, you can use an erasable pen. This also works on regular paper, but this has become my new addiction because I do a lot of word bubbles. I do a lot of think mapping and it's a waste of paper. Uh, But here I can just go crazy. I can think bubble my way through whatever it is. And sometimes, you know, you're stuck just on an image and I want it to be sunshine, but I want to be a lot more literary than that or unusual than that. And I will just write sunshine in the middle of the page and get going on, you know, word bubbling around there. If I find something that really works that that's like uh, words that I want to keep that I want to don't want to wipe away there's a little QR code here in the corner and you could just take a photo and it'll turn it instantly into a document that you can keep on your computer it's so nice that's amazing. So, I know I yes. love this I, I love know. that Nat's got right don't you use it too I have one yeah um I used it early on for my real estate stuff because I was constantly going in and like making notes so you can use it across the board right this is a good gift period I think really yeah I think Never so and I like my little small notebook it turns into my to-dos I can just wipe it down um you know my thinking was that I wanted to use a little less paper for somebody who's kind of addicted to paper but it yes. feels like paper and it, it yes. like yes. looks like paper you know what I mean so so that's for that person in your life um here's one of the um, I do what I call um, staff gifts. Um, I work for me, but I also um, 
treat the staff really well. And this was uh, last holiday season. Uh, we did staff. <laughs> it's like, is that for paragraph then? Because I mean, I'm no, not sure. for me. So staff, <laughs> this is from Powell's Bookstore. It is a perfume. It is a cologne, Eau de Bookstore. And oh. it honestly oh. smells oh. like aging books. Uh, can't recommend this highly enough. Ooh. <laughs> um, gotta buy another one it's a very sexy smell <laughs> seriously the scent will really drive weird. your significant other wild yeah, <laughs> who doesn't want to smell like old paper right <laughs> remember but they describe it really well so at Powell's bookstore they've got them again this mm-hmm. season um you know but it's really interesting like you can spray this on a pillow have it somewhere in your office and once it, you know, the initial notes, it's a bit of the floral and you kind of like, oh, I'm walking mm-hmm. into a bookstore and it dries down into that scent of mm-hmm. old paper. Mm-hmm. Like I wouldn't wear this on my body up to dinner. I want it in my house though. You know what I mean? Unless you're going mm-hmm. with librarian. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I'm dating some sort of like, you know, tweed, elbowed yeah. Um, they're out professor. There. Yeah, they're, they're out there. there. Um, so that's one of my favorite things in there. Um, okay, let's let's talk about computers, okay? Because yeah. we're with a computer all day. So things you could do that are practical. Um, so my husband last year bought me, you know, blue light glasses. Yes. Okay, and mm-hmm. that was very calming. So I love that. Thank you, honey. Um, also, things like thumb drives. You know, you can never have enough of these. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything to do, like uh, my husband also bought me last year a big new monitor and uh, a great Bluetooth keyboard, um, you know, one of those magic mouse pads, mm-hmm. the ergonomic chair. Um, he even bought me this cushion that's like, <laughs> it's like this tall, but it raises you up so that you're not, so that it's healthier for your, for your wrists. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. You don't get all that yeah. pain. Um, so there's lots you can do in and around a computer, even like a cute little case for your computer to carry it around in. Um, do you have other like ideas that. for computers? I have one for, um, no, but but for writers, uh, just kind of thinking this, I forgot to mention it. This is Bob Eckstein. Do you have this already? Um, so he, this is Bob Eckstein's book. Yeah, it's called uh, Footnotes from the World's Greatest Bookstores. And, you know, he is a cartoonist and has been for years for The New Yorker. And this one has a forward by Garrison Kellier. It's true tales and last moments from book buyers, booksellers, and book lovers. I mean, Bob we is have to actually, talk about- yeah, Bob is actually one of our close it. friends. And um, oh, he's, yeah. he's been on the oh, show. Oh, um, oh I, that's fantastic. Yeah. So you know about this book. Yep. And he has a yeah, postcard set it. of the it's same. Cool. So he oh, gave oh. me a copy of that. So if you like the book, so you can look at it, it's great. Or if you want to send it's postcards to friends, amazing. it's also beautiful. So oh, that's fantastic. Cool. Yeah. I just think it's so special. And so, you know, for, for those of us authors, mm-hmm. you know, when we're eyeballing what bookstores do we want to go to in America and sort of oh, make all oh. Our, them. our plans. Right. Um, I yes. think that that's kind of not only is it a beautiful coffee table book, but it's a hit list for success. I love that. A hit list. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to tell, we got to tell Bob. <laughs> He'll love that. He will. He'll love that. <laughs> so a, a few other things. Um, one thing that I loved when my first book came out, my family went crazy over it. And so I got a few things. First of all, remember marketing is everywhere, every minute of the day. One of my favorite things was a luggage tag, okay, with my book on it. And so every time your bag comes out, because I traveled a lot and did a lot of speaking engagements, and people would see this, they'd be like, oh, what is that on your luggage tag, you know? And so then you get to, it opens up the door to say, well, let me tell you about my book, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So that's really a cool thing. Also, you can get earrings on, okay, Etsy has a million gifts for for yeah. writers and authors, but you can get your book cover on earrings. You can get it on um, all sorts of things. So just, and who doesn't love that, right? So that's a great idea. And that's very inexpensive for that. Um, okay, also again, the clothing angle. So this is a, a infinity scarf with pride and prejudice. <laughs> I love it all over it. It's very cozy. I had a gift come to me after my book came out and somebody had, she, I knew her really well. I don't know the company she went through, but she said, Hey, if I can have a PDF of your book, I know that's a weird thing to ask, but can I have a, you know, whatever. I'm like, sure. I know you. 
and she had it printed into an infinity scarf. So it's That's my so book cool. as yeah. the word. And I thought that was really fun. The next time, you and know, strangers were out. following her, like, like <laughs> trying, to read. trying to read around. <laughs> How do neck? I get published? Very you have, you should have one, um, like a book on you. Like I can sell it to you right here. Just <laughs> right here. Read, read a chapter. I like it. Um, okay, uh, you know, t-shirts. Obviously, there's all sorts of writing t-shirts. Um, what you else had a great suggestion about that? t-shirts. Um, if you have a pen name, oh, or if like Susan and I, you choose to have a pen name that you actually you pretend like it's client, and you use that pen name and put them in your schedule so that you actually get work done on your own mm-hmm. stuff. That's you can amazing. do that for somebody you know on a t-shirt, like your pen name. What? I yeah. this is okay, wait. I need to hear more about this. She books appointments with her pen. Okay, name. so all right. So so on her, her, stuff. her pen name is so my pen name <clears throat> in my schedule. <laughs> oh, your voice. <laughs> okay, so I needed to like come up with something and so I pulled somebody from a short story I've written. So Cassidy Dane. And I've chose that name and I was new. I was gonna use it again if I ever wrote like stuff I didn't want people to know was written by me. You know what I mean? Like a erotica yeah yeah Yeah, it was like bodice rippers or something and then you know the rest of my readership they'd be like wow so Cassidy (laughs) Dane so uh I I recently brought her in on my client side so Cassidy has specific places on my calendar where she is my most important client that day and I treat her the way I treat the other writers that I work with and it's working out great it's changing my productivity and so (laughs) and so you can come in yourself Yes. When you start editing and coaching, all of a sudden your schedule is full. Yeah. And then you're like, hey, you know, what about my own writing time? And so it's important to to schedule yourself into your days uh, like a client. Yeah. So anyway, so so Wendy's telling me about this, and I'm like, that's such a great idea. So she says, you need to get a name. Yeah. And she goes, you need something with moxie, just that you know mm-hmm. has that sort of edge. And Someone I said, who gets stuff done. Mm-hmm. I said, how about if her name is Moxie? So now my writing pen Ooh. name is Moxie. All right, Moxie Dane, because yeah. I'm their sister. sister. Oh, okay. <laughs> Because how writers work now there's a backstory and a story thing. arc and you know, yeah so I, I get these that. emails you know how's Moxie doing today yeah you know, she got any work done. that's Very so fun. good okay. I have a persona that um I try to oh. to put on that I try to be more confident when I'm working um but her oh. name is Pop-Tarts McGee so that's not really oh, nice. as, as McGee. yeah oh, I think I might fun. need to come up with something a little less out there because she doesn't really get much work done either oh, so, you know, she, <laughs> found, finishes, she sounds a little fun like she's a little very lighty yeah. Yeah. yeah she was probably yeah, drinking while writing that yep yeah, yeah. 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 So. <laughs> drawn to the toaster yeah. a lot yeah. and you should be just a tiny little bit afraid of this client yeah. because she has expectations that are high and it's all there in the so name demanding. and you're like very demanding. When it's her hour, I have got to be on my game. I'm going to have so. to think about that. I'm going to think about that. Yeah. Okay. So this. let me, let me add one more category. Um, you know, all of us writers are yearning for craft knowledge. Okay. Yes. And so I think that the intangibles are so important to us more than, you know, I, these things are fun, right? But we really want to become better at our craft. So some really great gifts are, you know, um, send them to a workshop, okay? Or uh, let them do an online class, really important. You know, you can give them a a gift card, let them pick out what craft literary item they want to study. You know, the masterclass subscriptions are amazing. You can get them a year subscription to the masterclass and be taught by, you know, iconic writers. Magazine subscriptions, Writer's Digest, Mm -hmm. Poets and Writers. Um, the writer, they're both online and um, hard copies, but those are vital. I think when I first started taking writing seriously, I would like wait for my Writer's Digest magazine to come and I would devour it. Um, So those things are super important. Craft books are very important, which makes me again, want to pitch Wendy's books. Yes, highly Um, recommend. You know, I have a whole library of craft books and, and each, each writer who offers advice or 
talks about a literary element comes at it in a different way. And so just because you have one book on character doesn't mean another book on character or three or four books on character development mm -hmm. isn't uh, important because the more you read, the more it sinks in and from different, maybe a different turn of the phrase from a different writer. So craft books are always appreciated. And you know, if they already have one, let them exchange it for another. Um, but but it just shows your support um, for for what they're doing and mm -hmm. uh, and ongoing learning. I think we learn writing for years and years. It, the learning never stops; it just deepens. Um, yeah. So that's that's an important thing um, to to gift your your writer friends with or yourself. You know, well, what I love about yourself, um, right? yeah. Wendy's book specifically is I pull that book out. I pull it out every couple of months because, you know, you go through yeah, I do too. the process of submitting something and then sometimes you won't have something to submit for a while and that muscle kind of uh, deteriorates. And so you have to go back and try to kind of remember um, some of those details and how to submit. Really the submission part is so helpful. Um, mm -hmm. And I talk to people about that book all the time. So highly recommend that one. Makes me so, so happy. It is so specific, right? You know, when yeah. we've got our book projects, we're in partnership with, mm -hmm. you know, an agent, an editor, and we have so many people involved. But when it's our short creative work, we are the masters of that destiny. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things that I really work on, you know, every month with my clients is nudging them to actually do the submission part. You know, I think writers get writing it, you know, and then the next phase is even harder. It's the editing and the fine polishing. And then when it comes to actually submitting, even if it's very easy, because it is, it's just specific, um, you know, that confidence that we can give mm -hmm. each other, that right. is a gift too, like, you know, for your writer friends, for people in your world to say, it's okay to submit and have something rejected a few times before it gets picked up or many, many, yeah, many that's times. That's part of the process. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you expect rejection and uh, it just means you're in the game. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, and then I have another, just for fun. I happened yes. to see online last night looking for fun gifts. Okay. There are different drinks for writers. Okay? So there's a whole line of literary teas. And so if you Ooh. love tea, like they're named after, you know, Emily Bronte and just different, you know, famous writers. That's kind of fun. But I also found there's a, a whiskey out there. And it's called Writer's Tears. Yes. <laughs> I get a bottle of that, right? It's only $39. It looked really delicious from caskers.com. C-A-S-K-E-R-S. <laughs> nice. That is a funny gift. Now that's the most so, important okay. one on the four writers list. There's mm -hmm. um there's a there's wineries that have you know what writerly labels. Um I, I don't know any of them right off the top of my head, I'm but I'm sure I've had a few any glasses. Yeah. Um but things like that are always fun or coffees mm -hmm. and things, you know. Who can't get enough coffee in the morning? Right. Yep. So yes. all right. I think that's about uh games. Oh, do you still have your campfire story starters? I do. You can tell us about? Oh my gosh. I don't have it next to me right now because we just played it the other night and I've been playing it with so many people. And my favorite thing about this game is making non-storytellers tell stories. It yeah. I have learned so much just playing it with non-storytellers and storytellers alike. And people get so into it. And um Half the, half the battle, I think, is getting started because most people are like, oh, my gosh, I have to tell a story right now. And so you have to be the brave person that goes out on the limb and starts and then everybody starts to open up. So what it is, is this um, game with these cards. <clears throat> and actually, I think we talked about it on the podcast a couple episodes ago. Um, and each card has a prompt and everybody gets one and you can't look at it until it's your turn, which is also the worst part because everybody's like, oh God, what is it going to say? <laughs> I'm so worried. You're like, it's going to be so, difficult. Oh, um, but uh, so you tell a story based on your prompt and it can be true or false. And then everybody else has to guess if it's true or false. And it's so much fun. And you also learn who's a good liar at the table. So you don't trust them anymore. So <laughs> and when they you have writers, yeah, you know there's gonna be some very good liars in yes. there. There are I know the two of you 
writing so much fiction. Very <laughs> great essays. But knowing your fiction world, uh, that was really, really fun, I think. <laughs> yeah, I love that Crowd game. Sleeper, really, really fun. Yes. So um, what, can we talk a little bit about gifting um, writers with editing and coaching? Yes, yeah, let's sure. talk about it. I would love to talk about that, especially. An amazing gift. Yeah, if you guys could also talk about, you know, um, how someone might go about finding a good coach too, because I think, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff out there. And if you're going to, through Twitter, you might find some people that are better than others, worse than others. Obviously we recommend you both. So. Well, thank you for that. Thank you. We were talking about this this morning, and I think one of the essential elements is um, a lot of different editors specialize in different things. Like, you know, really between Susan and I, we do have our own specialties along with, you know, the fact that we both really love to edit personal essays, let's say. But Susan loves book projects. Mm -hmm. A lot of book projects come Susan's way. I am horrified when somebody says, hey, I've got a book project. I'm like, I'm not your person <laughs> at all, but I know people and I would love your short story and, you know, your, your, your shorter pieces. Um, so I think first step is to really make sure that whoever you're going to vet more closely actually works within the genre that you are writing. It's either, you know, if you've got sci-fi, make sure you're working with somebody who understands what's actually selling in sci-fi. If you're writing a short story, make sure somebody gets it. It also really helps if they are a writer too, because mm -hmm. um, coaches like Susan and I are marketing our own work. We've had, you know, we've got different connections um, within our field that we can share with people. It really does matter if they're also a writer, but there are coaches that you can find that are not writers themselves. Um, it just, I think, does add something to the conversation of actually getting things sold. Yeah. So what, what do you have to add to that? So basically, I, I think there's probably some listeners who may not even know what a writing coach does. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, let's talk about the difference between an editor and a writing coach. Um, and sometimes, like, for example, I can do, I do both. However, so editors, there's different kinds of editing involved. Um, you can have copy edits, which is basically looking at your grammar, uh, looking at your sentence structure, um, continuity, things like that. You, you have developmental editors, which are vital to anyone who is, who is writing a book. A developmental editor will take your first draft and read it and look at your storytelling. Um, again, you want to find a developmental editor that works in your genre so they understand the tropes. And then they, they give you feedback that helps you with your second, third, fourth, fifth drafts. And they work with you through those drafts. Um, and from there, you would send it to a substantive or copy editor who looks at the finer things. Um, one's a big picture, the other's, you know, the, the tighter picture of um, you know, just looking at your syntax and your grammar ability and all of that, what makes sense. Now, a coach, you can also, that person can also be your writing coach, but it, what a coach will do is help you, first of all, flesh out your story idea and get you organized and get you prepared. You don't just sit down and start writing. There's a lot of pre-writing that comes with developing a successful book. And you go through that process first. They get you ready to go. And then they'll check in with you according to your work schedule. So some of my clients want to talk to me every two weeks. And some want to talk to me once every three months, depending on how they work. But they, you help them stay on track. And, you, and you're the person that they talk to when maybe they're just depressed <laughs> I'm sick of this book. I'm a terrible writer. I'm this, I'm that. I've had, I have one dear woman who she's in her eighties. She's, she's writing uh, her first two, well, two books now, but she, you know, I'd send her back all the edits and she looks at it and she's like, I don't even know how to use my computer. I, I don't know what to do with your edits, you know? And then I'm like, you can do this. You can like, let's just sit together. And I just, just like teach her how to do it herself. And and, you know, you're, you just, you're a confidence booster and you, you coach people along to the finish line and you help them with all of it, A to Z, um, the querying, if they want to do that, if, it, if it's 
self-publishing. You help them understand the process. You show them different routes to go, who to work with. Um, it, it's really having someone in your corner. Um, and it's it's fun. It's a lot of fun to have somebody who's there making sure that you do make your dream come true and you don't stop in the middle because it's easy to stop in the middle because writing is hard, right? Yeah. yeah. So if you have someone who you think would benefit, buy them an hour or two and just say, hey, you know what? Here's a coach. Um, why don't you meet with them for an hour and see if they can help you get get organized or <laughs> Um, you know, you have your book and you're sitting in your drawer for two, two years and it hasn't gone anywhere. Hire a developmental coach, let them do uh, one edit and give you feedback. Things of that nature are really, really helpful. And like a, a half an hour conversation or an hour conversation, you can get so much out of that. So it doesn't mm-hmm. sound like that much time, but um, I think it really is you know, especially as a gift to someone else, it, it it's quite, you know, you just get, you can say a lot and learn a lot in that yeah. amount of time. Right. right. Um, and you can be sneaky as a gift. It was fun. You know, we, we um, had Diane at the retreat with us. Um, her daughters snuck me an email. She had been, she said, Hey, I went to see Wendy's presentation. I think I might want to work with her in the future. And so they went behind her back um, an email and said, can this be a secret from my mom? You know, I think that this would be really good for her. And it was so much fun. So, um, you know, in those situations, then, you know, I just wrote down, Hey, it's a, a personal letter from me in a card, you know, that said, here's what's going on, you know, call me to schedule. Here's what we've got going on. I really look forward to meeting you and working with you. And so that was the gift, the tangible gift that she was That's able so to give. Cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so things like that are really meaningful. And it did give her the chance to sort of push aside that, oh, I shouldn't do something for yes. myself. I don't want to spend the money for myself or mm-hmm. putting it off. And then, you know, January, first week of January, we had a meeting and said, all right, let's make a plan for this year and, and really got going. And I think it's so important just to, to have people in your corner in the literary yeah. world. I mean, you know, the four of us are connected and we check in with each other and we sometimes talk about things that aren't writing, but isn't it awesome that we love this whole world and we can talk about that nonstop mm-hmm. together. Yeah. yeah. So you need to have, you know, add new people in and a writing coach and a, an editor could be part of that group. Yeah. And I think uh, the thing that people don't realize with that as well is how much it can build community. Like the people that we met at the retreat, my gosh, I got closer to them in those, how many days? Was it four days? Five days. Five days. Yeah. Five days than oh I did God. with most of the people I went to high school with. Like even my close friends in high school probably <laughs> never danced around a house with a metal chicken with me. So <laughs> There's not only photos, but a video. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. There will be some rags. We have proof. We have yeah. Yes. Yes. We have some, some dancing. I'm not scared. scared. I'm not scared. scared. <laughs> I kept track. It's all, kept good. Track. it's all good. I do think that, you know, having something like that, that gift of community, every time, you know, you send somebody to a coach, you send somebody to this, you send them to, you know, like a, an online class mm-hmm. um, or a destination class. Um, you get a chance to just hang out with other writers and it, you don't need a giant tribe, but you need a tribe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You do. So yeah. when it comes to things like the retreats that Susan and I do, um, you know, you, you can have a pretty big tribe in a small amount of time because we're sharing such intimate work. This is our mm-hmm. heart work that we're doing. Um, you know, it's not a cocktail party where we're, you know, just getting to know each other. We're like, what did you write that made you cry? Like that's, mm-hmm. it's a big deal to get that close to people. And yeah. the lasting impression you usually have is you get a sense of who in that group you want to exchange pages with, you know, who yeah. in that group is kind of writing the same thing I'm writing or trying to um, do the same thing I want to do in the next year, whether that's land an agent or get a second book out the door or figure out Twitter, like whatever it is, you kind of find your own mini tribe within that tribe. And so I'm glad that let's, let's share a little bit more about writing retreats in general. Yes, please. So honestly, it would be like the pinnacle of gifts to, to give someone with. I will take it if anyone wants to give me one. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. So basically what you're gifting is time 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you're sending someone to a location. So for example, we had one up in um, the mountains of Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, we've done them in Santa Fe. I did a few in Italy um, and in Tucson as well. But what you're doing is you send them for five or six days. And most people come alone, to be honest. Now you guys came as friends, which was wonderful. And but it's not, it's something that you can give someone, even if they don't have a close writer friend, because it is a safe space. The, the people who host retreats understand that you're creating sacred space for these writers to practice their craft. And writers do their best working alone, but they excel working in a group. And so you have morning classes or at some point of the day you meet and you, you talk and you learn about craft. Then there's lots of alone time where they can choose to do whatever they want to do. They can write, they can explore. Usually these are, these retreats are done in places that feed the soul. Okay. Because you're looking for soul work. You want someone to be inspired by nature by the ocean, by the desert, places in nature that, that evoke emotion. And so, and then for in the evenings, um, you can choose to stay and write in your room. You don't have to come back and meet, but we also offer though communal space at night because a lot of people just want to hang out and get to know other writers. And that's where you have a chance to get to know someone as a friend and by the end of the week, after sharing writing, talking about writing, there's usually lots of emotions that come out at the end, lots of tears, lots of just renewal and the confidence. They're just people. They're people that work hard. It's not some illusion of you know, the fancy writer who's locked in the tower and delivering them food and, you know, <laughs> have all of this um, magic going on on the page. You know, they're people, they're just us, but we're, they're people that are passionate and that are willing to put the work in uh, to create stories that move others uh, in a positive direction or just to entertain. Um, so we love putting them on and we urge people to, to seriously consider, you know, whether you join us or, or who, who, there's a lot of retreats out there, you know, pick one that speaks to your heart and, um, and give it a try. It's a bucket list that's worth every penny that you will put into it mm -hmm. um, uh, in terms of craft knowledge and friendships going forward. Mm -hmm. I completely yeah, and agree. I loved was that we had people from every stage of the process beginners yeah. to people who had agents to all, all different kinds. I have to say, Linda kills me with I what she's been her. putting out. She's fabulous. Um, so it's, it's just really cool and it's open to everyone, wherever they're at. Yeah, exactly. We're all on the journey. Just we're on different, you know, different parts of our journeys, but it's all the same one. And, uh, and sharing our experiences, everyone as they share their experience nurtures other people's journeys because um, we all have important things to say and to share uh, regarding what we write and and how we do it, what our process is. I think one of the most validating things too, when we're a group like that, of people who are trying to figure this out for themselves, this creative world and, you know, how do I finish my stories? Do I want it to be a book? Do I want it to be a series of books? Like, we have so much in common as writers, no matter what we're working on, we seem to trip ourselves up in the same ways. And we, we have all these things that we're like, oh, it's just me who feels this way sometimes. And you get in a group of writers. Yeah. No, it's not you. It's, universal. it's all of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I always end up walking away from these group experiences thinking, oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay. I, I am really doing all that I'm supposed to be doing, all that I can be doing. All right. This is, this is good. I'm on the right path. But you know, so it kind of takes that question yourself out of your life, at least for a while and quiets that and says, you know yeah. what, I get it. This is who we really are. Um, we're all just trying to get these stories out. <laughs> <laughs> he has a gift in mind. We'll put him in charge of staff gifts this yeah. year. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm going to end up with jack cheese or something. Oh, so cute. I think my fa- one of my favorite parts of that week um, was after I read my piece, uh, which was obviously pretty emotional. M- Melody came up to me and she goes, your husband's an asshole <laughs> because you know it was about him having feelings for someone else. And I was like, we're still married <laughs> happily. So, <laughs> and, you know, we could both laugh about it because it was just like, yeah. we were already at that level and I love her. And it was just, exactly. it was a beautiful moment. So <laughs> but I know what is it. so interesting is people by the end are so willing to be vulnerable I mean, each of those pieces that were read, I I went through a box play next. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with mm-hmm. you, because you, it's it's amazing how you 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 gain courage, mm-hmm. and and that's all about developing your voice as a writer. So if, to be able to stand up and be vulnerable and read your work, something that's very deep, that is everything. That's what writing is: is sharing that depth inside of you and to watch writers um, just blossom in that way and find the strength, like what you shared was so personal and beautifully written. You. Um, you know, we were all moved by it, so. Thank you so much. And it was it was nice that it was kind of a piece that I had gotten away from, I think, too. You know, yeah. um, I had yeah. written it a while before because I didn't wasn't able to really write anything um, well, I wrote some things, but nothing complete while I was there. So I got the start of things, but I, I wanted to read something that was whole. So, um, and it was nice that we had the option either way too. And it was, it was fun because you give courage and you get courage from the people around you too. Like it's just a sharing of it. So highly recommend. I mean, I feel like if you've listened to this episode at this point and you're not buying someone a writer's retreat, what are you doing with your life? (laughs) 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 And I think, um, you know, that was the first one I had been to. um, And and otherwise I had been to writing conferences. Mm -hmm. And so I would just point out um, they're a little different. Like uh, what I loved about the retreat was having the combination of the um, the instructive periods and the time to to marinate in that and marinate in the environment and explore and have some get some work done and um, I think versus like a, a at a conference um, I mean those are great too but I I when I go to conferences I don't get that. Um, that time for personal reflection and working on projects. If I do, it's like kind of scurrying in between things or like I would get up early. Um, I was on deadline for something a couple of years ago. And when I was at New York Comic-Con for fun, I was at Comic-Con for fun. And, you know, it's just like, um, you know, sent my husband off to like a film festival thing that he wanted to see and like hid in their quiet room and got words in. you know, for 45 minutes or something. So that's the kind of pace, um, you know, at writing conferences or, or wherever, um, where like the work is really secondary to everything else that's going on. And I liked at the retreat, how, um, it got the same space and reverence as each other aspect of the experience. Yeah. That's a great perspective because having been to both as well, it is a very different experience. And I think people are a little bit afraid of retreats because they do tend to be run a little more expensive because, you know, mm-hmm. but I think that the experience, like you will get so, mu- so much personally out of it, you know, mm-hmm. whereas with a conference, that's a good starter. But as you're growing, I think there's got to be a lot more introspection and a lot more vulnerability once you get your craft to a certain level and then you just keep leveling up. So, yeah. And hopefully then that you take back to your desk and it yes. moves you ahead. So mm-hmm. PJ can send us chapter two. I still have like the water. <laughs> like, can you, can I can pick all of the images of your story. Like yeah. every single moment. We're That's all on story. the edge. We're like, like this. Listening. She's like, she walks off. We're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what happens next? <laughs> and share the rest of that story. Um, yeah. You know, and, and it is nice to get that kind of feedback too. I think, you know, watching a room full of people react to your work 
um, and enjoying it, I think is, mm-hmm. is a, a good thing to, um, to experience. Yeah. And then you can kind of say, oh, you know what, this one is working. I thought it was working, but this one is working. Now I'm going to do whatever I do with it. Yeah. I love all of this. Well, um, we're getting close to our hour here. So okay. let's talk a little bit about what you guys um, have coming up and where we can find you, how people might sign up for your retreat in the future or where they might watch for it. Yeah. Well, let's see. Um, coming up, um, I'm going to have a few online classes. Actually, on both of our websites, SusanPolman.com, P-O-H-L-M-A-N, WendyLynnHarris.com. You can see what we have to offer. And um, between classes, coaching, editing, and we we will be doing our uh, writing retreat again uh, in the mountains of Pennsylvania um, a week later this year. So we have more fall color. So yes. it's going to be the last week of September, first yeah. week of October that during that um, period. And we'd love to have you join us. So please uh, look us up mm-hmm. and 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 reach out and get in touch. Even if you just want to send us an email and say, hey, you know, I heard this great podcast. Uh, we'd like to be connected. We want to be put on your newsletter. Yeah, um, we'll definitely add you to the newsletter. And that would be great. Yeah. Awesome. So stuff coming up for me. In addition to that, I will be teaching um at the, uh, it was the Northern Colorado Writers. They're changing it now. The new name is Writing Heights Conference. I'm actually going to teach live again. Woo! To a group of people. Um, it's a terrific uh, conference coming up in April in Fort Collins, uh, Colorado. If anyone's interested in That's doing that. That's 45 and, minutes yeah. away from me. Yay! Stop it! You coming? I will come. Yeah, I will be there. there. <laughs> Yay! But it just got more awesome. Okay, that's going to be really, really fun. Um, so it's it's one of those conferences that I really have enjoyed. I, I have taught there in the past, you know. And there's, I know um, Susan's favorite is the uh, Perma Bomb. Oh yes. Okay, because that's so coming up. That's coming up in April, in March. Oh, March. All right. Now, anyone who enjoys humor, which is everyone in the world, if you want to come to the greatest conference it's it's called the Irma Bombeck Writers Workshop it's every other year and it's in beautiful Dayton Ohio uh, it's at the University of Dayton because that's where Irma Bombeck went to school and also she raised her family in Dayton and it is the most magnificent warm fuzzy friendly just funny um, conference that you can go to and it sells out in four hours every single so time wow. so if you are interested in joining because they, they have a limited number of seats to keep it intimate and people come back year after year like there's all these writer tribes now it's it's uh probably 80 percent women not that men aren't allowed but it's a lot of women a lot of uh, a lot of estrogen in the room and um it's just fun. So you can look it up online, Irma Bombeck Writers Workshop, and it'll tell you when the lines open. And it's not even expensive, honestly. So if you want to treat yourself to a, a great workshop, it's, it's maybe three or four days at the most. Um, look it up. It's fun. I'll see you there. Dog who is yelling at me back here. I don't So I keep <laughs> muting myself. Ma'am, it's not. It's wait, not wait, 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 wait. Yeah, this is all great. I'm super excited for all of this. My husband's not going to be as excited, but yeah, got a big <laughs> list though. Now yeah. it makes it very easy mm-hmm. to gift, you know, and I think, yeah. uh, you know, there's no better person in your life to think of when it comes to gift giving than yes. your creative friends, your writer friends. I right. Mean, come on. Um, although the last, gift, the, <laughs> the last gift I got from PJ was this like very cursed clown doll that oh that's scary. scary I love that <laughs> very scary clown look you chose her you mm-hmm. chose her as a friend <laughs> I, you knew what was coming <laughs> I did not know that was coming <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't be surprised I love you have to tip up PJ and show um 
the gift that I need to get my staff next year. Oh, yeah, oh, this, is, um, yeah this is my reading fox. This is a large brass, um, so like cute. a it's like a head trophy, but you know it's it's a sculpture and it's a fox with reading glasses. Oh, and there's yeah, also like head librarian. Yes, Shush, there's. I'm watching Fox. Yes, there's. I got three actually, but I'm not putting them all on the same wall. So the other two, there's a a much larger bear with just gigantic like Clark Kent glasses. <laughs> and then there's also um, like a, a white rabbit style hair trophy. Mm-hmm. The hair has a mustache and a monocle oh. with oh, a yeah. chain. So those are in other parts of the house, but this is the reading box <laughs> yeah, behind me. Three of those in one room is a little much. <laughs> it's and a little much. Got, <laughs> you, you yeah. You'd have to call them everything. the council. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> all right ladies well thank you so much for joining us this was so much fun um and we can't wait to see you in person again soon that's it for this episode of right away with that and pj and hey thanks so much for tuning in from the treadmill or walking your dog or cleaning the house we're so glad to have you and don't fret we have new episodes coming out every first and 15th of the month on almost every podcasting platform including youtube so make sure you subscribe because you don't want to miss a single second of season three for news updates and bonus content subscribe to our newsletter at rightawaypod.com or connect with us on twitter at rightawaypod we'll see you next time for another great interview but until then right away right away